My name is Cindy Weber, and I'm originally from Burlington, Wisconsin, and I converted to Islam 23 years ago. I was raised in the Catholic Church, and I was taught by nuns. The real place where I learned about Islam was in Kenya when I was a missionary teacher there. That's where I met and I saw other Muslims and how they lived their lives. This is like the first like thing that I noticed about Muslims is that they had uh, a good family life. And I think that was something that I was searching for. In Kenya, the families that I saw there they were all enjoying each other and like maybe having a meal together. And the contrast for me in America was um, a Sunday afternoon meant being in front of the TV, in front of the ball game with a case of beer, and it was just like so empty. In the center of the southern United States is the country's largest non-coastal metropolis known as Dallas-Fort Worth, a sprawling metroplex of cities rich in diverse cultures and religions where the population of Muslims is growing very quickly and now home to Amira and her husband, Syrian native Dr. Riyad Taha, and their daughter Lubaba. They live in an affluent community of a North Dallas suburb known as Richardson. <laughs> Several houses on the block reflect the prominent Islamic culture in their neighborhood. I met Amira in a medical meeting in uh, San Francisco. She was at the meeting and I was there. And we decided to get married. I became a Muslim by studying about Islam myself. I did not know anybody from any of those Muslim countries. I just studied Islam by myself and decided I wanted to become a Muslim and then I went to an Islamic center in Chicago and told them that I was interested in Islam. And then they gave me literature and some books to read. And then I said, I said, okay, thank you. And I took the books and literature. And as I was leaving, they said, wait, wait, wait. Why don't you become a Muslim today? And I was like, well, I'd just rather read these books and things like that. I'm just thinking about it. And they said, well, do you know if you don't become Muslim today and you cross that street down there, you will, and if you get killed, you will go to hell. And I was like, no, that can't be because I'm Catholic. Catholics don't go to hell. <laughs> and then they said, oh, okay, then we know. You want to go drinking with your friends, drinking alcohol one more night before you become Muslim. That's why you don't want to become a Muslim today. And I said, I don't drink alcohol. So they were like, oh, okay. If you want to accept Islam, they gave me this address of a big masjid in Chicago. You can go there and tell them you want to become Muslim. And so I took the address, and two weeks later, I went to that mosque and said my shahada. I just think that God wanted to guide me, so there was nothing going to stand in the way. Uh, I was born Muslim. My mom converted to Islam before I was born. So I was born Muslim and my dad is Muslim and I just came into a Muslim family when I was born in Chicago. Being in America and being Muslim is 
Definitely, it's something different because not everybody around you is the same uh, faith or understands your faith completely. But I think that um, having the support of like the Muslim community around you and I'm um, going to like the Muslim school and stuff has really, um, you know, just made you feel comfortable being here in America. And um, knowing that a lot of Americans are open to, you know, Islam and just learning about it uh, makes it a lot easier. When my daughter first started wearing hijab, it was required at the Islamic school after fifth grade that you wear hijab. So like all her friends at school were wearing it and so she just like got used to it. Wearing hijab is just something, um, you know, that, I, that is a process and uh, that's why I chose to and um, just knowing a lot of my other friends also did it and so just the support of that and um, just just being out there is I mean it, I mean you get used to it so it's not anything like really like hard or different or anything you just you just get used to it and when she went from Islamic school to public school she just kept it on and she never had a problem I mean she was the co-president of uh, like Altrusa Club um, she's in the honor society. Just, it really wasn't a barrier to anything. These are some of my awards. This award was for Outstanding Campus Leader, and I was awarded that from Texas Women's University. And it was for my dedication and appreciation for being involved throughout the years that I was at Texas Women's University. This award I got awarded that from the Campus Activities Board for being president and it was for my service and dedication to the organization that got me this award. This award I got from also from my university called Who's Who Among American Colleges and Universities and this is a whole application process and eventually you'll get awarded that from your university. Just because you're Muslim and wearing hijab, it doesn't mean that you can't be recognized for your achievements. Yes, I do worry about my children, about the Western influences of the world, but hopefully they've had enough good Islamic training that they'll always be able to refer back to Islam when they're making their choices. Now my children are 19 and 22, so they are going to be making their own choices. So. Only I can set the foundation, so that's what I tried to do. Uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about my son yet. His name is Abdullah. He's an American Muslim, and he just sent me an email, and let's open it and see what he sent me. Oh, <laughs> this is typical him. He's an American teenager, and he just finished film school in Orlando, Florida, and he now lives in Los Angeles and he'll be starting an internship with the Muslim Public Affairs Council Hollywood Bureau. I spend seven days a week doing Islamic projects because there's so many to do. You just have to pick one or two or three or four or five and there's so much work to do here in America, especially Dawah, speaking about Islam to other people. Um, I'm very active in the refugee community because Dallas is a, like one of the number one cities that refugees come to. 50% of them are Muslims coming out of the refugee camp. So they understand that they think they're coming to a Christian country and that's going to be difficult for them to practice Islam here. But when they get here, we're ready to receive them and let them know that it's easy to practice Islam here in America and they can keep their their faith and they don't have to hide it or pretend something else. This is the center where we welcome uh, all the newcomers and when I say all I mean Muslim and non-Muslim and uh, unfortunately most of the refugees coming in the United States are Muslim so we do uh, have the prayers here, we have the five daily prayers, we have um, children's classes for Islamic studies in Arabic. It does mostly end up Muslim, but we have uh, all religions for our English class. We partner with Catholic Charities, and they bring the uh, English speaker here, the teacher who teaches the adults English as a second language. So we do have all religions, and everyone is welcome.
We help them with their apartments, getting things that they need. If they didn't get their food stamp program yet, we like can bring them food, help them like with kids' clothes, help them with furniture. And once a week, we have like office hours where they can come and bring, tell us about their problem, whatever they have a problem with. And then we help them try to solve the problem. And then help them with any of their legal papers that they need to be done. Like they already have their work permits, but then after they're here for a while, we can, you know, help them renew it or help them apply for their green card. Or if they lost a card, we can help them get a replacement. We like if they can't read, because some of them come from like African countries who, you know, they don't have education, we can read their mail for them or help them make out applications because they don't understand it or how to do something or go to the Social Security office. Anything that they need, we help them with. The Neighborhood uh, Association gave us money. There's, it's called Vickery Meadow Improvement District, and they gave us a grant to have an after-school program for kids. And so one of the lessons that we had was uh, everybody can paint and put their hands in paint and put it on a stone. And it was like to give the kids some pride that this is their place. This is, you know, this is for them. And uh, so they feel like it's, it's theirs. In Dallas, we have a big Muslim community. The way that we, the Muslims know each other here, it, it's mainly through the mosque. The, the other people that you meet at the mosque, and then it just goes out from there. You, you, then you get to like know their friends, because not everybody goes to the mosque, but most of the Muslims here, they have a feeling that they need to give, and so that they give you know something. It can be money, or clothes, or furniture, or time for a project, and that's how they all help. The American Muslims in America feel like they're living their life normally. I mean, the people, if you're a woman, you get extra looks because you're wearing a scarf, and that's basically about it. Or just, you know, just little, like something little can happen, like you can notice, like maybe like a cashier is rude to you. That could be just little things, but you just, you know, accept that, and you just go on because you know that that person wouldn't behave that way if they knew like how good Islam you know would be for them and you just behave your best and that's all you can do. I do feel like I am American just because um, I was born here and then the the culture that I was raised around has definitely been American influence and I do have like an Islamic culture too um, but just being here and living the lifestyle that Americans live here, I definitely feel like I am American, just um, different. The life of a Muslim is a little bit different. Like some Americans would like, like for enjoyment, it would be getting together to drink alcohol with their friends. And to us, that would be something that we would hate. Just being young, I like to go out with my friends, um, go to movies or go to the mall or um, go to a lake. I practice playing violin um, and uh, I like to do art and I also like to travel. A lot of times whenever I travel, it's usually me and my mom that will go and um, we have been almost a lot, of, we have been a lot of places. I've been to um, uh, England, France, Germany, um, the Netherlands, uh, Greece, Spain, Morocco, um, Jordan, um, Saudi Arabia, Syria, Lebanon, um, Costa Rica. We, we've just been, we've been all over. We like to go on vacations and uh, just visit different places is what we like to do. I know that's like a big spare time, but like on a daily spare time, I guess going shopping would be something that we enjoy or going to some uh, exhibit or going to a special program around town. M Muslims like to do any activity like Americans like to do. I, I would not say that a woman is, um, is oppressed. I know that that is like the uh, 
the perception that a lot of Western people get just from maybe like a media that they've seen or um, movies or stuff that they have just heard. Um, and a lot of times people get that impression and they never even knew a Muslim. And so they just automatically get that. And I think that when they meet somebody that's you know, open about talking about Islam and just, you know, just being okay with being Muslim, I think they definitely, their minds definitely change and they, they see like the lifestyle that we live and the, um, the actual way that we are and the actual understanding of who we are and just letting them be okay with us asking questions um, is, is definitely a way that to get people not to think that way. A lot of people do ask me where I'm from, and I think a lot of times, uh, if they've never heard me talk, I think they're kind of shocked by my, you know, I don't have any kind of accent, or um, I guess they were thinking maybe that I don't speak English either, and so I, a lot of times people are shocked by that, and just finding out, oh, that I was even born here too shocks them, but, um, but then, you know, they just get to know me, and then it's easy, and I think that the, the, the reason why I would say I was American is just because I'm living here. I was fortunate enough to go on Hajj twice, and I was really excited to do all the five pillars of Islam. My trip uh, actually for my first Hajj was paid for by somebody in Saudi Arabia. I was working at Ikra Foundation, an Islamic book service, and the one man in Saudi Arabia who's uh, the head of it, uh, he knew how excited I was to go on Hajj and so he paid for me to go on Hajj and I was met over there um, by people from the Muslim World League and uh, I went on a, um, a, a caravan or trip with a group of people all from Saudi Arabia. Um, they explained everything to me and took me to all the you know various rituals that you're supposed to do in the Hajj and it was pretty overwhelming it was amazing of course the people were telling me be careful there you can die there it's so hard and things like that so I was like really scared because I had two little children by then but I don't know somehow Allah gave me the determination and I went and I just of course had the best time and the most amazing time. The main thing that I brought from there is how the Muslims from all other countries are there in large groups and just to how, how crowded it was and how many Muslims there is that's I don't know I just you you feel different as an American to be one of the people who you know got to go on the Hajj. I remember when you started the Mikat I was like really excited that I was at the Mikad. You change your clothes to your ihram that you're going to wear. And I really like that part because everyone looks the same. You can't tell who's rich, who's poor. And um, it was just, it's just really great to be in like a uniform. And it's not a, you know, fashion show or anything like that. It's, it's a time just to worship God. But anyways, the first time I saw the Kaaba, that was, of course, unreal. You can actually see the place that you pray to, you know, five times a day. That was just, of course, unbelievable. And making to offer on the Kaaba was, like, so satisfying. I don't know how else to describe it, but... I don't know. Just God is the center of your life, and, you know, you just are showing with your physical self that that's the center of your life. That is really incredible. Trying to get to the Black Stone. I did not make it to the Black Stone on both of my Hodges. I did on an Umrah, on another Umrah that I went on. I was able to make it, but not without a, a struggle to get up there. It takes a lot of patience. You learn a lot of patience and you become like a prayer soldier because you just pray and pray and pray and pray and by the time you leave Hajj it doesn't even bother you to say your five prayers because you said so many while you were there that it just it makes it easier uh, to pray. That was one of my experiences that came out of that. The Zamzam water, that's you know another thing that's uh, 
I don't know, it's just indescribable. I just like to put it everywhere, all over, wash my face in it, and everywhere, all my arms, and just until the last drop, I just like to just keep, you know, putting it on myself until the last drop goes away. And then the uh, side between Marwa and Safa, it's just bigger than life. Like there's nothing between you and the sky. <laughs> And of course, we went to Medina as part of the trip and seeing the Prophet's Mosque and everything there is just an incredible experience. When I visited a lot of uh, Islamic countries or even just Saudi Arabia in general, um, I, a lot of people were really open and they were really happy and glad to like meet an American Muslim and they were just, you know, really shocked about it. They want to know, where do I live? And when I say Texas, they're like, oh, Bush and, you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. But a lot of times they're really, really um, happy and glad that they met an American Muslim. I've definitely, I've never had like a bad experience about, oh, you're American and Muslim type of thing. I've never had that. The experience of Hajj uh, is not intimidating for a woman. It's, uh, it's like everybody's one body of people. And I found the other women that I met there on the Hajj, they were like so happy to meet an American. The other women who are there are like so congratulating you and so happy, you know, to see an American who is a Muslim. <laughs> The ritual of prayer that I like is I do like the wudu because you it does change your focus. You say something at each point, you know, like only let my hands do good things. Let my arms carry good things. Let my feet take me to, you know, good places. And let my head, uh, you know, like, I don't know, think about Islam and don't let me talk bad about people. When you wash your nose, don't let me be arrogant. This is a special room built in our home just for praying. Up above, you will see Bismillah Rahman Rahim. It means I begin in the name of Allah. So let's go and pray. And then the prayer is like something that's peaceful and you like get in tune like with your body. You like, you know, you're in this like really fast pace here, which we have like in the United States because you have to multitask and do everything yourself. So it's like you just like get in tune and then you focus on asking Allah for what you need. And it just, uh, it's, a, it's like a break and then you can like refocus on what you're doing. Even though Amira and her family follow the peaceful guidance of the Quran, as do most Muslims everywhere in the world, they also recognized there are those who do not. Muslims or Christians or Jewish can do stupid things. The biggest misconception about Islam about from non-Muslims is that they think it's a violent religion or that Muslims are supposed to kill everybody who is not a Muslim. In every religion, uh, there are some good and bad people. And we should not uh, accuse the religion uh, of things that human beings do. Well, I think about the few who want to blow themselves up or commit suicide in the name of Islam. I think that it's surrounded by a lot of other problems. Either it's by the oppression that they're feeling in the land where they live. Um, but I really don't think that it's um, something that they're supposed to do in Islam. They can say they're doing it because of Islam, but actually the very act of doing it takes them out of Islam because it's not allowed to commit suicide in Islam. The main thing that I love about being Muslim is just being able to connect with God one-on-one -on -one, and that it's not something that I would have to go through somebody and that I know that Allah is always there and that I can just um, 
go to him whenever I need. And so I think that that is the, the biggest thing about it and the biggest thing that I like to relate to. Okay, the message of Islam first, peace, very important. And you respect all the other religions as long as they, they worship God, the same God that created us all. And the soul religions are are good as long as they do good, they don't harm people, and they worship the Creator. Uh, the Muslim community here in the United States should try to change uh, the impression about Islam. Dr. Taha has lived and worked in the United States in the field of medicine for over 50 years. During that time, he has built his own practice in cardiology, while at the same time participated in community service programs like the American Heart Association and the American Cancer Society. And before meeting Amira, Dr. Taha raised a daughter who married a non-Muslim. In fact, he is a practicing Presbyterian pastor. Many times we have arguments and, and we talk to each other and I try to convince him, you know, that Islam uh, would be better for him. But he still, this is his job, being a pastor. Yeah, we respect whatever religion each one of us has. He respects my religion, I respect his religion. I am hoping that the Muslims in the United States would contribute to make the United States better. I mean, there are things in the United States that are good, like liberty and freedom. To make the social life of families better, living in the Middle East is a different culture than just being Muslim by yourself and so I think a lot of people tie those two together and just I think it's really important for people to understand both of those worlds and where we're coming from and for us as Middle Easterns or Muslims to understand the Western world too because I think that a lot of times we just stereotype and just um, you know pick out the bad things from each other when it's, it's really important just to understand where both are coming from and try to put those differences aside to work together. I think that all religions can exist in a Muslim country and there could just be tolerance and acceptance and dialogue between all the religions in the Muslim countries. As an American Muslim, the thing that makes me happy in my life is actually the religion of Islam. I'm happy when I'm following all the tenets of Islam, when I'm praying, when I get to do all the Islamic activities that I like to do. That's what brings me happiness. It comes from the inside out. I don't need any external thing to make me happy. I am proud to be American and Muslim, and I think that having the, the influence of both has definitely made me who I am, and uh, it's something that I am proud of and that I'm not ashamed to say. It goes together good. Islam in America goes together good. So hopefully more people can see that.